Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Banned Books Week webinar series featuring comics creators and librarians in conversation on topics centered around censorship and intellectual freedom. These webinars are being offered in partnership with, oh goodness. <laughs> Sorry guys, <laughs> still adjusting to the digital world. Uh, these webinars are offered in partnership between ALA Graphic Novels and Comics Roundtable, the ALA Intellectual Freedom Roundtable, and with Image Comics. All webinars are being recorded and will be made available online on the GNCRT website at ala.org slash rt slash gncrt at a later date. We're so glad that you're all here and if you enjoy what you see, please make sure to let people know those recordings will be available to be watched at their convenience. Uh, in addition to these webinars, you can participate in Banned Books Week through Escape the Dead End of Censorship, a virtual escape room where you can demonstrate your knowledge of intellectual freedom. You can access the escape room at tinyearl.com slash IFRT dash BBW 2020. That's the number 2020. And you can see the URL here on the slide. You can also let the world know you love comics and support the freedom to read them with the GNCRT and IFRT tech tattoos that can be affixed to your laptop, tablet, or phone to proudly display your support for the work of our roundtables. Tech tattoos can be purchased on the Freedom to Read Foundation store at ftrf.org slash store. And once again, the URL is up on our slide. I'll go ahead and hand it over to Brandy in just a moment. But before we get started, if you have any questions for today's panelists, please put them in the Q&A. We'll be monitoring these questions throughout the webinar and have some time set aside at the end uh, for questions from the audience, but we may also pepper them in throughout the discussion. So please speak up and, and ask away. And now I'll hand it over to Brandy. All right, thanks, Chloe. So I am going to introduce our uh, panel today. So the title of our panel is Black People in Comics. And um, we will be in conversation on how Black people have been historically portrayed in comics from obstacles of integrating Black characters into mainstream and superhero comics to present day works, issues Black creators face working in the comics industry, and the importance of non-white characters existing on the comics page. And now I will introduce our panelists and our moderator. So Valentine Delandro is a Canadian comic book artist, illustrator, and designer. His credits include titles from Marvel, DC Comics, IDW, Valiant, and Dark Horse. He's known for Marvel Knights 4 and X Factor. He is the co-creator of Bitch Planet with Kelly Sue DeConnick. And Chuck Brown is the Eisner and Ringo Award winning writer and co-creator of such books as The Punisher and Black Panther for Marvel, Rotten Apple for Dark Horse Comics, and Bitter Root for Image Comics. He has been self-publishing for more than 18 years and has also written comics for Xenoscope Entertainment, 12 Gauge Comics, and Line Webtoon. So welcome, Chuck. And our last creator is Johnny Christmas. He is the co-creator of Angel Catbird with acclaimed writer Margaret Atwood from Penguin Random House. The critically acclaimed Sheltered, which has been translated into multiple languages, Firebug, serialized in Island Magazine, and Pisces from Image Comics. He recently received much acclaim for his illustration work on William Gibson's Alien 3. His newest title, Tartarus, with Image Comics has been the subject of much critical acclaim, proving once again his prowess as an author and illustrator. So welcome to Johnny. And lastly, our moderator today is Tamala Chambers. She is a librarian with over 19 years of experience serving children, teens, and adults as a public and school librarian. And Tamala is the public library chair for the Black Caucus of the American Library Association. So thank you for moderating for us today, Tamala. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Tamala and get this party started. Great. So good afternoon. I got to say it is an absolute pleasure to be here today. And I am looking forward to a very rich and necessary conversation 
So I'll get us started with the first question and please feel free to popcorn. So how have black people been historically portrayed in comics? Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll start. Um, uh, good to see everybody. Uh, I would say that uh, black people have been historically portrayed as uh, sidekicks, villains, or comic relief, um, not as uh, you know three-dimensional characters with their own uh, you know agency and you know uh, own motivations and their own like storylines that they have to um, that they're trying to see fulfilled, like real black people in the world. So um, uh, there there is more in, uh, representation now, um, but uh, I, I think there's still a, a deep need for characters with that are much uh, that are fully rounded. It's a lot of characters have been um, like you said, confined, confined as um, sidekicks or, or confined to just being in their neighborhood, particular neighborhoods or supporting like Captain America or other characters or Green Lantern and, and things like that. Um, it, is, it is a little better now, but we still have the legacy of those characters that are still kind of exist today in our movies and our films and our television, which, um, you know, there are some some negative effects of that, but it also some positive effects how, you know, Fox became Captain America and things of that sort. But when you see the backlash of people getting so upset about Fox becoming Captain America, people getting so upset about um, a black Spider-Man, you kind of start thinking about the origins of these characters and, and the racism they were born out of in the first place. So, um, things are getting better. There are creators that they're doing more things are more aware of, um, you know, that these, that these characters are, do have their own individual um, personalities and their own journeys and, and they do, can accomplish. They can be their own, their own, um, their own franchise. They can be um, bigger than what they were intended to be in the beginning when they were created. Just to add to that, uh, uh, I think a lot of uh, black characters historically been created as a as a result of, of uh, a need to uh, check a box to fill a category out of tokenism, um, and also uh, really just the the, the way to uh, turn this into commodity. As, as we have been historically. I mean, uh, uh, you see that there's a, a, a way to profit off of inventing a character that, that, that may be different to try and outreach to a, to a community where you can maybe make some money. So there, there have been uh, uh, some characters that the, their origins are, are born of that too. But, um, Again, so, some some of it's uh, well intentioned. Some of it is 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 uh, not meant to be uh, as dastardly as I guess I, I think I'm making it sound. But I I think that a lot of them do end up being uh, just uh, uh, token characters that they had to uh, ultimately in for the sake of of at least looking diverse, but not necessarily doing the work to be uh, 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 substantially diverse is has, has uh, made or, or, or uh, been the, 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 the grounds for, for a lot of characters that have been invented uh, historically. Thank you very much for that. So what comic creators, I'm sorry, what comics characters or creators did you admire growing up? I like Storm. <laughs> I think that's a, a common answer. Um, not just because she was a, she was one of the, the unique characters in that um, not only was she a, a black woman, but she had like she was a leader of the X-Men for a while, um, for a good long while, even when she didn't have her power. So like it showed that her strength came from within. Um, and when she did have her powers, her, her powers are, I'm from Florida, right? I grew up in Florida. so hurricanes and storms, you know, that's kind of like, that's the, that's the air we breathe, you know? So, uh, so having a character that kind of, so that there was like a personal connection in that way, but also I saw the power of what a storm can do. So every time I saw a storm, I would think about like, oh, oh, here it comes, you know, this is storm, you know, she's no joke. 
So uh, I, I would say that she was uh, one of my favorites growing up and probably still one of my favorites. Did you say a character of color or just any character? What kind of characters or creators did you admire growing up? I guess in um, general. Oh, just in general. Um, I was a big, I was a big fan of, um, um, I guess Batman. I guess mm -hmm. just, just um, a regular person. He didn't have all these superpowers, and he could um, accomplish all these great things in a sense. And um, as growing up, I didn't really start writing until honestly, like late in like college or even. I mean, I wanted to write, but I could, in my mind, I couldn't see myself as a writer. I didn't think I was intelligent enough or I could accomplish something like that. But, you know, seeing characters like, you know, Batman and, 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 and knowing that he's just a regular person that can accomplish great things, it kind of helped me understand that, you know, I can do anything but just put my mind to it, you know. I mean, of course, he's a rich white man, but that's beside the point. But um, that was one of the characters that kind of stood out to me. Um, later on, definitely Black Panther. Um, it's seeing this African king that was so different from what all the other characters you saw out there. I mean, I love Luke Cage and, and Falcon and some others and Storm, but just seeing this um, this king that had a, had his own kingdom and his costume had a, a true purpose. It was like traditional, traditional garb and things like that. That really stood out to me as well. Um, yeah. uh, for me growing up, I, I mean, I, I, I had a standard uh, steady diet of, of super friends and, and uh, the X-Men and all that. Uh, so uh, a lot of superior information. It would be hard for me to pick one, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, piggyback on Johnny there with, with Storm because uh, X-Men when I was growing up, Storm was the leader. So uh, that, was, that was a big deal for me. I, I, I love the X-Men for that. I, I had an older sister who uh, we were able to connect with that too because she loves Storm as well as a character. Um, and uh, uh, picking up a, a specific creator is difficult. I mean, I don't think I I can really track an influence. The, uh, I mean, not until I actually started looking at art and, and following creators that way. But growing up, it, there was no one creator that I think really substantially stood out to me. I think I'll be, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, mention uh, Larry Strawman and Brian Stelfreeze. Like when I was, uh, they were two creators, like sure they're black creators, but I didn't know they were black creators. I just thought they were awesome. And then, uh, and it was just like this almost like this extra surprise where, where I forget how I found out, but some folks were like, oh, by the way, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, that they're black. And I was just like, what? That's amazing. So that was a, that, that helped. There was this extra door in which uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know uh, when I was a kid, it was before the age of like social media with the creator. So you didn't know mm -hmm. who they were. You didn't know how to pronounce half their names. You know, they were just kind of, <laughs> you know, you never heard their name said, you just saw them written, you know? So um, when did you find out they were black? I found out about Strawman, I think right before Tribe dropped. So yeah, it was, like that, that was me too. Yeah, right. Like so, yeah, was, yeah. like he was the act, X Factor guy, and it was just like, whoa, this guy is this guy's killing it. And then, yeah. like I think right before Tribe drops, it was it, it I, I, maybe there was like more exposure on him or something, and somehow yeah. the word came down. And, yeah, I didn't know who was black. Yeah, like, I, I had no idea. Honestly, like Dennis Cowan and all of those cats, yeah, I, I had same. no idea, no idea until well into. Um, like mid nineties or something like that, when they started printing like magazines with actual photos of these guys, like the, like the wizard top 10 and all that. Yes. Right. That's, that's, that's as early as I think I remember actually putting a face to a lot of these names and realize, Hey, look at that one. That, that's I that, that guy. They're all white. I remember growing up. I really didn't realize there were yeah. like you said, that the wizard top 10 things and the, and the list that, that did help see that there are black creators out there but um mm -hmm. i didn't read tribe um you know back in the day but um i mostly stuck to like i guess a, a lot of the mainstream stuff and i didn't really see a lot of black um characters out there that were like me i guess that kind of contributed to i guess my stunt in my development of wanting to actually do this you know for a living and get my stuff out there right 
So how has your life experience informed your own work in comics? Well, personally, I mean, I deal with um, a lot of depression and anxiety and things of that sort. And um, I kind of put that into my books in some shape, form, or fashion. Um, of course, being, um, you know, Black in America in, um, in these times, you know, you, um, your thoughts tend to dwell about, you know, the state of the country and, and where we've been and where we're going. And, and you can't help but seep into your work, you know, people complain about comics being political, but, you know, X-Men been political forever. So um, in some shape or form of fashion, a little piece of me is in all of my work. Um, I do think it's important to say something about the world and the state of the world, and, um, but also entertain at the same time. But um, a little bit of me has always seeped into my work. Um, even, I, I mentioned some negative things about, you know, like depression and anxiety, but I also try to put in a spin side of that, like who I want to be in comics, like the Singeries in Bitterroot. You know, they want to cure the sick and they want to cure these racing skeptical people. And Sylvester, he just wants to, you know, he just like, you know, wipe them out. You know, they, they're not worth it. And it's, you know, he's hurt by this trauma. I identify more with Dr. Sylvester, but I would love to one day, or one day as a people to be more like the Singeries, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how my stuff kind of seep into my work. Some of my characters may do these great things and this the stuff that I may aspire to be, but I'm not there yet. I'm not that kind of person, you know. So, or not yet in there. So. Anyone else want to take I, back? I would say in a in a more general way, um, I think uh, every artist um, like uh, their life finds a way into your work if your work has meaning uh, for you. Um, it, there's like almost no way it can't. Uh, so um, that's a really good point, Chuck, about uh, not just putting who you are and where you're at, but who you aspire to be and how you aspire the world to be. That's, that's a really interesting point uh, in, in how that, that's part of it as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I find it, you know, I find parts of myself like tucked into story in places where I'm not, I didn't even know it was about me. Like I just, it's almost like these little Easter eggs where as you're discovering character and story and as things are sort of being revealed to you as you, um, as you start uh, laying the groundwork. Cause you, you'll start saying like thinking, oh, this is a story about um, vengeance or whatever. But as you go along and as you're, um, you're unearthing things about your character, you might find that it's actually a story about redemption so that you so mm -hmm. you go back in and 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 you uh you might want to strengthen that theme or you might want to keep it going from one end to the other end of a, a spectrum um or a continuum um yeah so I, I find it i find it very interesting it's a it's almost a very helpful way to learn things about yourself and about the world and about your viewpoint about the world because sometimes your characters will say things or do things that surprise you and you don't realize you thought that or felt that until they did it. And then, and then you reflect on it and you're like, oh yeah, this part of me does see that or agree with that or, or doesn't feel that, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know how much more I have to add to that. I think, I think that, you know, it, it, so participating in this, in this, uh, in this medium, it, it, you can't help but uh, uh, have some sort of connection to it personally as well you can you can detach yourself if you want to certain projects but but ultimately it always uh, something uh external something that 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 you're experiencing is always going to start influencing your work on, uh, on some level and and comics in particular too are, are always as as most art forms are traditionally are always just a reflection of what's happening right so i i think that that comics particularly can can do that really effectively too just because of uh the nature of the medium uh being uh, which which is built off of narratives and and utilizing storytelling so uh, uh those stories ultimately get told just as a reflection of of what's happening right now i didn't realize until recently that it can go both ways actually where um 
was talking to my co-creator David, and we were talking about how people are reading into things that we never even realized we put into the story. They're seeing all these different viewpoints based off of what we're saying. So we're seeing these these, these feedback and on, and, on, and on Twitter, and we're like, wow, that's a really good point. And that kind of affects how we kind of move forward with the story and how we kind of see our characters, either consciously or subconsciously. So it's kind of like a hive mind kind of thing, kind of developing all of our stories all at once. You know, our, our experience and our audience experiences as well. Thank you for that. Um, for everybody listening, they, they have provided us with uh, really, really good uh, nuggets of wisdom for an elevator pitch for the power of graphic novels. So the next time, you know, we have those conversations with our, with our clientele, with our patrons about graphic novels. This is a really, really, really fantastic uh, rationale for why. So thank you for that. Um, do you all feel like your identity or ethnicity has made it difficult for you to break into the comics industry? And if so, what are some of the challenges you have faced and how did you overcome them? Uh, if, it, if it did hold me up, I wouldn't know. Mm. That's the, that's the, that's the, honest thing I could say about it. I don't know in what arena, in what instance, in what, uh, on what specific project that may have worked against or for me, because I mean, uh, uh, there is the potential, I guess, for that to go either way, but, um, I can't say anything, uh, explicit actually happened um i just think it was kind of fascinating that when, as soon as when i started drawing and like i would sort of turn in things where say i had to make up a character and i would if it wasn't explicitly said i would make that character black mm. and then they would be oh you made that character black that's interesting and then we'd, we'd sort of have to move on from there whether or not that character was going to be black that that sort of happened uh a handful of times but i think that was my instinct i mean you didn't necessarily say that this was supposed to be a caucasian character or an asian character as like, i'm going to make this character black and then uh that would lead to a discussion <laughs> and, and uh uh it, it's just interesting that that the default is always uh that the character is going to be perceived one way and and sometimes if you have a different perspective on that you're gonna you're gonna present something else uh uh yeah that's 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 my point he made a very good point where um i don't really i don't really know for sure um i can only guess you're at conventions and cons and, and gatherings you kind of see this kind of a fraternity frat boy kind of mentality where there are these groups of people and these gatekeepers. So um, you don't know if you're putting out stuff and you're, you know, sending emails, submitting stuff, you don't know what, who's at the head of that table that's deciding, you know, if you can get more work or, or what if you're, all your characters in your books have black characters and who's not picking it up because of that. Um, so I don't really, I don't really know. Um, just personally, just, uh, Personally, I always feel like I'm a little behind on, I guess, from the from the um, from the starting line, trying to in this way to life. A little bit behind, like all of us as black like, Americans are a little bit behind as far as in this race of life. So we're always trying to catch up and get ahead. You know, I think um, as a black man or woman in, in this world or, or this country, you know, there are there is, there is a definite challenge without without saying in comics or whatever in life that you do. If I experienced anything in my face before, not to my knowledge at the moment. But. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to pick up on, on on what you brilliantly said, Valentine. Like, you just you just don't know. You just don't know. Like, uh, sometimes you might get a feeling. Like, uh, um, to pick up on what you said, Chuck, about the rooms that you aren't in. <laughs> you know, the uh, 
the the groups that you're not part of, uh, the groups that you don't even know exist until you know much later. Um, so you know, from that you could draw. You know, everyone could draw their own conclusions, but it. You know, <laughs> I'll just leave it there. It is cool to see, I guess, the evolution of the convention scene. Because when I was going, you know, early 2000s, you know, with me and another guy at a con, we were it. We were like the only black people there. Sometimes. And now you go, it's like cosplayers, and we're everywhere. We're creative because it's all over the place. Um, it's cool to see the evolution. Of it. But um, again, like you, you just don't, you just don't know. All you can do is. Um, move forward to create the best you can be aware of it but um just move forward great we have a question from um one of our participants um julia wants to know what do you think about superhero comics redesigning previously white characters into black characters for example wally west being changed into wallace west from dc Uh, it's a good question. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of split on that. Uh, because I can appreciate the intent behind it. I can appreciate, I can appreciate the, the, the motive and the, and the, uh, directive behind trying to, uh, Diversify. <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 a. But I I think that there's there's uh, something there's something off about the fact that they they don't have enough faith to sort of build their own character and give that character enough traction, give that character enough exposure to grow and and gain their own following too. That it's sort of just. I, uh, leveraging off of other characters and legacy characters to boot. So it's, it's, it's a mixed bag for me. I may have a more thought out response afterwards. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to what Johnny says. He's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I feel the same way. Like I'm, I'm of two minds of it. Like I, I do feel like, uh, like if you could, if you can build a character from the ground floor and like, and, and, you know, there's like excitement about the characters, there's like great story behind the character, like the character will take off. You don't need to have them piggyback off of another character. And it, and it sort of diminishes the, the character that they, um, that's being used to piggyback because they'll always be thought of as the second, like a, as a temporary solution, uh, as a momentary thing, or as a um, uh, like second place, you know, it's you know, you're not the real uh, you know character that holds the mantle. Um, but I mean, the same could be said about uh, white characters who take on the uh, you know, Wally West was never the Flash in most people's mind. You know, Barry Allen is, is the you know the Silver Age Flash, um, but. So, so I, so in that spirit, I can understand like um, updating characters with the times. You get Barry out of there. You put in Wally. You, you know, you get this one out and you move this one in. So, um, I don't see why some of the, the the new characters that take over the mantle can't be black. Um, but, but th there is a uh, a sneaking suspicion uh, at times. Uh, to, to echo what you said, Valentine, about about intention and. Um, and instead of yeah and just just like build just build new just build more like there's always room for more characters so uh so just just have more black characters just add black characters you know have yeah. always more i say because i feel like it, it gets the, those characters once they're while it's west i don't know i don't know where he stands right now but it's almost as though they're 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 kind of set up to fail you know what I mean? If they don't, if they, if they, they're already going to get backlash because, because Wally and Kid Flash, Flash, he's got a following for using him as an example, right? So you, you change him and you bring in 
what essentially becomes a new character. I mean, you can't say that that Wallace West is the same character as, as Wally, but and and he's already gonna be as a character. He's 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 in the hole. He's in a deficit because he already has a a, a set of of uh, fans who aren't going to embrace him, who aren't going to accept him because he's replacing the character that they love, right? So you're 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 sort of setting that character up to to have a a, a larger uh, already. It's a it's a a, diver, a a minority character. It's a black character. So two steps back already from the the starting line, and now already you're going to put him in a further hole because now there's this whole legion of fans who are going to start. I'm not going to curse. Uh, you know. Uh, 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 not appreciating that character, accepting that character for who he is. So, so uh, uh, another couple steps back from the starting line, and then if he if he gets a good storyline, which they inevitably do, because the creators come in and they want to, uh, uh, you know, put their best foot forward. No, no creators coming onto a book or we're going to come onto a project and say, hey, I'm going to tank this. They're going to give you a really good story like genuinely if if you can appreciate the story for what it is and appreciate the art and the and the writing and everybody who comes together on that uh they're going to put together a really solid comic book the best comic book that they can but none of that gets appreciated on its merits just because again like i said he's working from a deficit as an example i don't know anything really about wallace west i don't know how how he was received or or where he stands in uh, DC, but just in general, like characters like that, um, that uh, that get replaced, I guess, which is which is probably accurate. They they, I guess, start in a deficit. Sorry, Chuck, I'm taking up your time. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys are doing great. <laughs> um, <laughs> doesn't really uh, doesn't really bother me, honestly. Um, you know, my son only knows you know a black. Um, 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 Nick Fury, you know, he only knows a black Wally West, you know, and true, it may be white guilt or checking some box or didn't want to create a new character for business reasons or or whatever they thought it wouldn't sell, but he's still black and he's still the Flash and he's still on the TV screen and he's still in the comics at some point. So, you know, at some point I kind of, kind of just, you know, take the win when we get the win, you know, and mm -hmm. the, generations. I, I don't, they could go back to a white Nick Fury, but my, I told my son that one, he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? White Nick Fury, he, he doesn't know that, you know, his Spider-Man is, is black. His Spider-Man is Miles Morales, you know, that's his Spider-Man. That's the only one he cares about. My daughter was like four, she's like, like three or four or five, and I told her that as, you know, the white Spider-Man, she's like, what? What? Because you're not really in the comics, you just kind of know what me and my son kind of carry around. So, um, mm -hmm. I totally agree about the intent sometimes, but you know, honestly, it doesn't really bother me much. Honestly, um, I love how they did Miles Morales, where he's a new Spider-Man, but it didn't just kind of put him, you know, made Peter Parker black or anything like that. But um, I don't know how popular Wally West was or what was going on with him at the time. Maybe they wanted to resurrect him. They were like, hey, why not? You know, um, that's my two cents. If we have some questions from the participants. Uh, first question, Angel would like to know, does that feel similar to the idea of changing the gender of previously established characters instead of creating new ones whole cloth? Why not create a new black, female, gay, whatever character that has their own complete identity, not just be an aspect of another? Why not? create that new <laughs> that's 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 not that's not totally inaccurate yeah um but it's it's a risk i guess that creators have to take and and um you know whether or not on whatever level that 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 character's released whether it's like one of the the major publishers and it's coming out in the you know like a, a dc character or a marvel character or somebody's making it independently i mean there's always you you always run the risk of of uh how that character is just going to be received right but if you have if you have a strong concept you have, if you have a, a a solid story behind the character i mean you just you you make it 
you you put it out there and you and you see who uh, who your audience is afterwards. Um, it's, it's it's always just a risk. I've only like dipped my big toe in you know Marvel, the big you know big two stuff. So I mean, I have no idea what goes on in those meetings and, and those retreats and in the boardrooms. And I think it's really what Valentine is saying. It's a lot there. Maybe they either they're worried about if it will sell or they just don't really care that much, I guess, you know. I don't know. Um, I think Iceman, you know, was a ladies' man forever and I think they made Iceman a gay character. So um I don't know, they they kinda explained it why it was kind of a time travel thing going on. You know, so um I don't know why. I mean, if I was in charge, I don't know. I I I would you know want to create new characters and take that risk, you know, um, or would I want to take that risk? I don't know. But I'm just creating indie stuff, and I don't know what the big the big two have in mind. You know, all we can do is you know let them know how we feel about what they're putting out, and hope we go listen. I've got nothing to add to any of that. That's that was great. <laughs> Okay, um, Charlotte would like to know, what do you think of Robert Morales's Truth Red, White, and Black? What sort of story, would that sort of story, excuse me, be better received now than it was in the early 2000s? I think it'd be better received now. That was the uh, Captain America um, sort of analog of, on the sort of Tuskegee. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was yeah that, that that was a really well thought out and i think right now it, it would be um there'd be more of a an ear for it and, and it was it was done well so like it would um yeah yeah it's it's too bad because that that was that was that was really cool i wish they would read maybe do a remake of that somehow or republish it or, or revisit that story again just, just thinking about Captain America, you know, sometimes you think, you know, how did this guy, you know, in the 1940s get this one-time experiment and this comes out the perfect super soldier? Of course, they experimented on black people first. It just makes so much yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, that story had a huge, a huge um, influence on me when I first read it. It was it's really amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's perfect for any time, honestly, but now, you know, definitely. It would definitely need it now. Yeah, and that was Kyle Baker on art, I think, right? Like it was, uh, I remember it being beautiful, like beautifully drawn. The cover is so amazing too. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, I think the, the characters, I don't want to spoil it, but the character's grandson is in the comics now, I think. He, mm. he has this, well, it's kind of messed up because going back to what I think what Valentine was saying, I think he had this, Super soldier serum in his blood somehow, so it kind of got passed down to him. But now he's like addicted to drugs or something like that. Something weird. Oh no! Ruined it somehow. I'm like, oh, man, that's a descendant, but now he has some kind of substance abuse issue or something's wrong with him or something. Oh, but, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Is it the shield? The flag? I can't remember what his name is, but yeah. Like, Dang. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Give it enough time, you know, to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They'll find a way. <laughs> They'll find a way. <laughs> oh, man. All righty. So we have a couple more in the uh, Q&A here. Uh, what would you recommend? This is from Jonathan. What would you recommend as a must-read comic either with black characters created by black creators or both mm -hmm. <laughs> Tartary. Go, cop, go cop that you <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah bitter root is a great place to start <laughs> it, it is that's, that's <laughs> a no, very no, fine place to start no lies there um, was it red, red, black, and um, wet, red, white, and black? That's, I mean, that's, I'm glad they brought up that book. That would be a, a, a good, uh, you know, that's a really good book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or anything Kyle Baker has done um, or continues to do. 
Oh yeah, like, Cowboy like, Wally and all that is yeah. Just, um, why I hate Saturn and you know, yeah, like brilliant. Um, I've gone blank. Yeah, me too. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, that's what it is. I messed that up. Sorry. Sorry. The the thing to infer from the inability for for me personally just to, is that there's a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah. You all like like there's 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 comics is such a a a uh, expansive medium. And again, I just I, I love comics. I'm I'm sure I'm not alone on my screen right now with people who just have a love for comics. Um, there's there's a story and and uh, a creator out there for everybody. I mean. It may take a little bit of legwork. It may take a bit of uh, uh, hit and miss as far as you know trying out different things. But there's there's something out there for everybody. This this medium is really really rich with uh, with uh, uh, lots of stories and lots of people who are, are uh, doing solid work, like really really great uh, creative projects out there. So that's that's why I can't really get one thing out right now. <laughs> And not, and not just Marvel, DC, and Image, as you know. Absolutely. Kickstarter and uh, web yeah. tools, and you know, if you if you go to a con and you see a brother or sister sitting there, you know, at their table, you know, swinging by and somebody up to you, 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 the book may change your life. You know, it's maybe something they just put together themselves that um the blam, you know. Um, I know one webcomic, Chuck Chuck Collins called the Bouncer. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Comic, that's pretty cool comic. It's kind of political. Okay. And also entertaining as fun, so that's a good one. I'm gonna write that down. All righty. So, comics for young people like Jerry Craft's New Kid cover topics like code switching and explore race in constructive and effective ways that speak to what young people might actually experience in their day to day lives. Why is it important that we continue to have comics like these? Because the experience is still relevant, um, and uh, Jerry Craft—that's uh, New Kid's a great book, and it's uh, so well, like, conceived and executed, and it's absolutely brilliant. And it's uh, and it has like a whole lot of humor, and it's not, um, uh, and and the stories are unfortunately the the, the source of a lot of. Um, the issues that our protagonist, uh, Jordan, I believe is his name in the book, has are um, very relevant to, to, to young readers and to, you know, people like, you know, people at my age and like, it's, it's still like, it's truthful. So it, it just com continues to resonate. So um, when, when children can see themselves and anyone can see themselves reflected in stories that, or their experiences reflected, that they don't feel um, like, you know, as Denzel Washington said, like some kind of bad luck accident, like it just happening to you. Ain't it's not just happening to you. It's it's a it's an experience. It's a, it's something that you have in common with other people due to factors that might not have anything specifically to do with you um, as a person. So uh, so those stories are very um, helpful to 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 frame your experiences within context a context. And uh, I think that's what all stories do. Does anyone have any other thoughts about that? Um, it pretty much summed it up. I mean, um, definitely need more young creators out there creating these kinds of books. It's definitely important. Um, it's something I personally struggle with. You know, some of my stuff is kind of kind of dark and heavy sometimes, but. Um, trying to like reconnect with what kids are dealing with today. It's like like you said, so they can see themselves in these books and also bring them back to comics and make them fall in love with reading again. Um, it's very important. It's just, um, personally, it's just challenging for me. You know, I'm, I've been playing around idea with a, um, a children's book or something that kind of relates to more kids today, but, you know, it's kind of going back and forth, back and forth to the original question you asked, was, you know, putting your stuff into your work so a lot of my stuff is you know somewhat heavy sometimes so you really gotta you can't get too heavy because you gotta forget what kids are going through what you're going through maybe this is important what they're going through as well kids and young adults 
something to be mindful of. Mm-hmm. We've got a young reader story coming out in uh, 2022, Harper Alley. So uh, everybody keep your eyes open for it. What's it called again? Huh? What's it called again? Uh, the tentative name right now is Swim Team. Uh, so we're going to uh, middle middle grade swim team uh, with a uh, like black swim team uh, middle schooler. So so it's coming together right now, and we'll. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the final title, but but it'll be coming through Harper Alley, and it'll be written and drawn by me. So congratulations! Man. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. <clears throat> Right. So what words of wisdom, speaking of young people, right? What words of wisdom would you have for a young black person interested in pursuing a career in comics? Do it. Put it out there. Be honest with yourself about your quality. And uh, don't tell any, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Don't let anybody put you down. Um, yeah. I, oh, yeah. No, 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 go ahead, please. <laughs> oh, no, um, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like uh, with comics as with any other um, like endeavor, like creative endeavor or, or business endeavor or any other kind of you know, academic endeavor, like uh, so much of it really does depend on you and depends on what you have inside. And um, so if, if uh, external you know, um, influences or forces are, are telling you that you can't do it or like, it's not for you or uh naysaying like they don't know you you know they don't know what you have inside like no one knows that but you so it's 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 up to you to to bring that forth like it once you bring your light forth you know like like valentine and like chuck and like people see what they're they're doing you know and then they get like inspired like oh 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 snap like you know bitch planet's amazing or like you know, like on the stumps, really cool. Like, you know, like these guys are out there doing it. Like, maybe I can do it too. You know, once you shine that light, like other people are inspired. You know, like, like uh, when I found out Strawman and Stelfreeze were were black. Like, it just didn't seem so far away anymore. Um, so I think it's if, but only you know if it's within you. If you have the, you know, have within you to 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 do the long road because any creative um endeavor especially with comics like comics are are very solitary um it's very collaborative but it's also very solitary so you have to stick it out and you'll have to give it a shot to see if it's for you but if it is for you like do it yeah Yeah. as um just to add to that i mean i think that first of all and just going back to this is 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 my love for this medium. I mean, I, I, I can't understate that, I think, or overstate that rather. I, I, it's one of those, um, you have to have a, 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 an appreciation and a respect for this industry, for the, for the, the, the grind that it is, for the, uh, the, the commitment that it takes. Uh, if you can, if you can check those boxes and say yes to those things, then I mean, you have you have a, a shot. Um, but then there's a a opportunity for you to uh, add to the representation of this industry, which is which is necessary. It's needed, but it's also um, a, a, a struggle that we're all sort of dealing with too, you know, just trying to make sure that our, that our voices and our, our, our vision, our views, our experiences are uh, 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 brought to the, the, the same light that everybody else is, is uh, uh, at, at the, at the, at, at the same level. So, um, you know that's a that's a great that's a great opportunity. I think that if if uh, a new creator can can see all those things, can see the opportunities that are in front of them, and and to, and uh, do the work to to you know take advantage of that, then you know they're almost there. They'll 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 hopefully have a a, a great story to tell eventually, and and 
and they'll find an audience that'll that'll be ready to read it. I, mean, I guess anyone that may be dealing with um, fear in their equation on their journey, um, just be acknowledge the fear, but don't let it you know overtake you. You know, um, I was afraid to get on this or oh, not this this panel, but any and all panels freak me out. You know. Um, I was afraid to put out Bitter Root because I didn't know if anybody would like it. I was afraid to put out On the Stump because I didn't know if anybody would like it. I have a book of short stories now that I'm worried, I'm worried that sucks, but I'm going to do it anyway and put it out there and just hope that the quality is there and people will enjoy what I'm putting out because I love what I'm putting out. But um, just don't let fear control your life. That's all. Great. So I have one final question and then we have some more um, questions from the Q&A. But what can libraries and librarians do to help support and promote Black creators, Black people in comics and diversity and representation in comics? It'd be awesome to see um, more like indie festivals mm. at, well, at the libraries themselves. You know, um, when people aren't may not have the numbers to get out there or get in contact with these libraries, but the, the libraries seek them out, seek out these people that are, you know, putting out books themselves and still have day jobs and trying to get out to the industry. Just kind of showcase them, you know, maybe even give them a, a space in your library to kind of showcase indie creators or, you know, small publishers. You know, that would mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. great. You know, we thought these people, you know. So I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. Nice. Yeah, okay. that, that that would be that would be fantastic for for some sort of uh, uh, space in collaboration with a with a small press expo something something along those lines. I mean that would that would go a long way to uh, bring up new voices, bring up bring up younger voices that that are that are just trying to uh, gain some traction in the industry and and gain some readership. Uh, and I think that a lot of them would be, a lot of the creators would be willing to, to or more than willing, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be very receptive to having uh, a, uh, a platform like that to, to show off uh, any of the projects that they're working on at the time. Yeah, author talks would be, would be really cool. Uh, invite uh, local authors in your area. Um, get to know the local authors in your area. Have them come on down to the library and, and you know, signings and author talks would be, would go a long way, I think. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much for that. So we have a question from M. Kirk. What's your favorite of your own creations? Uh... Mine is probably Penny from Bitch Planet. Um, I, 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 one day if I'm working on Penny, then it's Penny. The other day if I'm working on uh, Cam, then it's Cam. I mean, I like, I think I, I'm connected with both of those characters very closely. Uh, any given day, it's one or the other, but uh, those, those two characters have been, uh, really great to, to, to develop. It's been, it's been a, 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 a privilege to try and, and uh, bring these characters through this narrative that Kelly Sue and I are creating right now. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to say the least. I guess for me, um, I have a book that probably no one's read, but it's called um, The Quiet Kind. It's a one shot through Dark Horse and one of the characters name is Solomon and um, he's kind of um, kind of like a Peter Parker character in a sense, you know, um, unpopular, but bullied a lot and he gets the power of all reality, but he does not, you know, put on tight to go out and save the world. He's just trying to figure it out. He makes a lot of mistakes, a lot of bad mistakes with his powers and he's just trying to, trying to get through life and not necessarily be a better person, just trying to keep his sanity in a sense, you know. Um, and I guess the Sangiris of the Bitter Root, they are who I want to be, you know, and I guess on the stump characters, they, who I'm afraid the world or the country will, will be, but Solomon from, from, um, 
from the quiet kind is kind of somewhat who I am. I'd say like whatever I'm working on um, most uh, recently, because like it's the, like, as soon as you open that up and you like dive into whatever you're working on on that day, it's just it's it's always just like falling in love or something. But I, I would say there's a there's a character in Tartarus that I, I won't say who it is because there's a slow reveal that's happening. Uh, Tartarus, my my graphic novel, um, that's out today actually. Run and pick it up. Um, that uh, I, I can't say too much because like the way it's unfolding is, is I, I'm loving that I get to spend the time crafting this thing in a very slow way that it might, that when it, when it drops, like I think it'll be really, really cool. So I love checking in with, with that character and seeing how things are going and watching the development of this very subtle uh, storyline that's going on in the background. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to apologize to our participants in advance if we run out of time with the questions. Um, but this is just such an amazing conversation. So again, thank you so much. Um, we have a question from Keith. Do you think Spawn is successful because Todd McFarlane or just a soft fan base forming over the years? I think everything Todd touched has been successful. Yeah. So I think Spawn's awesome. Um, I think uh, I think it's a really cool character, but um, I think it's hard to to separate the two, like Todd and Spawn. Like it's almost yeah. You know. Todd Todd created Spawn and and dropped him when he was the hottest thing in the industry. Like there's no way you can separate those things. It's 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 a lot to do with both of that. The the, the energy that just came went uh, together when when image was created and and spawn dropped it it was lightning in a bottle man that's yeah, not going to be replaced anytime soon yeah, yeah i agree i mean he was huge at, at marvel with spider-man and then he created spawn um mm -hmm. spawn was one of those books that you know let me know i could i can curse in my comics you know and i can't do what i want and eat myself you know so um yeah i agree with them I, you can't really separate the two um fantastic character um Cool creator, awesome writing. Um, Greg Capullo coming on as well. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we have time for one more participant uh, question. And the question is, what are the black female comic writers and artists and what black women would you all recommend? Digging what the uh, N.K. Jemison's doing over at uh, Far Sector. It's uh, so. I mean, aside from her other work, um, you know, her uh, proposed work. So I would say definitely go check her out. Um, they're not. She's a, not like the best kept secret in the world, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chuck. She writes a lot, but Fluor Richardson is doing a lot of cool stuff. Um, she did a Kickstarter called uh, Black and Awards. That's out there. Um, I'd recommend that. Uh, uh, Vida Alia, uh, they're doing really killer work over at, at uh, on Marvel right now. I think uh, they're about to launch New Mutants again. Always been a fan of their work, so yeah, uh, that's that's. That's a, probably a good wreck to start. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So thank you. We have come to the end of our hour. I wish we had more time because I could probably like just sit and listen to the three of you all day talk about this. And I'm sure that the participants had more questions that they would like to ask. But uh, again, thank you for sitting in conversation with me. And I'm going to turn it back over to Chloe and Brandy. Thanks, Tamala. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Tamala, for you being just an amazing moderator. And thanks to our incredible panelists, Chuck, Johnny, and Valentine. 
Uh, it is always a pleasure and uh, I'm so grateful for your insights. This, like she said, was a really fascinating conversation that could go for the next two to four hours. Uh, if you guys want to start like a lecture series. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to hand it over to, to Brandy. Yeah, thank you, Chloe. And again, thank you, uh, panelists and Tamala for being here and having this wonderful conversation with us. And on behalf of the Graphic Novels and Comics Roundtable and the Intellectual Freedom Roundtable, I want to thank all of our audience members for attending this webinar today. Like Chloe said, um, all of the webinars that we're hosting this week will be recorded and will be available at some point um, on our website. So keep an eye out for that. And if you enjoyed this one, we have another webinar tomorrow, again at noon central time. That one is titled Unwelcome to the Comics Industry. It's not just libraries that have banned comics. Sometimes it's the comics industry itself. So we have some fantastic panelists lined up to discuss how harassment serves as a form of censorship within the industry by creating unsafe and unwelcoming environments and how awareness of these issues is important for librarians to understand. And you can register for that panel um, online or by following us on social media at, at libcomics and the hashtag bannedbooksweeks2020. All right, and we have come to the end of our time. So with that, I think we're ready to end our webinar. Thank you again for attending. Thank you, panelists and Tamla. And I hope everyone has a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.